Hey everybody, uh, you know, sorry for the late video, this obviously was supposed to come out like two and a half weeks ago, so some of it obviously isn't updated, this is before the finale of Bleach came out, before Jujutsu Kaisen really got ramped up, so uh, I don't know how often we're going to be doing these videos because I'm in school now and things are getting difficult. Uh, so, like I said, I do apologize, but uh, there are going to be some videos coming out and hopefully some uh, better looking videos. I hope you're enjoying the faces in the podcast. Uh, we'll still be doing some of that. Uh, thanks for tuning in and um, hope to see more of this. Uh, so, here for you in the Simba Chudapo the outro. TLSP's Anime Intermission. It's me, Piero, here with Poster Ghost, here to talk about the state of anime and what we're watching. Uh, we, last time we talked, it was about a month ago. We're maybe one week behind for the exact month thing. But, you know, it works because there have been so many gaps and hiatuses this season in anime. I feel like they, uh, they're they figuring out that they, they can kind of just do what they want because they know that we're going to tune in. Yeah, like Bleach took like a two, two or three week gap. Zom 100 took like a week or two, right? Yep, two week gap. And then and then JJK took like two or three weeks. Yeah, they know. See, they're getting us now. They just know. <laughs> but I promise we are caught up right now. Yes, I actually just watched the Jujutsu Kaisen ex episode before we started. So, um, But yeah, we're going to get right into it. We don't want to waste anyone's time here. Plus, you know, Zach has the, you know, the super COVID. So you know, I, I don't want to be even on air with him for long because I feel like I could catch it through the internet. I make the sacrifices for the for the audience, all right? <laughs> Just because I'm willing to work harder for their benefit than you are. You don't have to, like, be all passive-aggressive, Chris. <laughs> well, well, you know... I'm just trying to protect myself, all right? And and now I have to protect my, my emotional state, you're, too, you're, because that hurts. You're the one who rescinded the mask mandate <laughs> and brought everybody back into the office. Well, you know, I was tired of those <laughs> goddamn face diapers, all right? Too many face diapers. <laughs> you know, all that bullshit that they're spewing might as well be a diaper. Goddamn liberals. No, <laughs> not at all. Uh, please do not quote that or take that out of context because that is not what I believe in it at all. Uh, okay, but yeah, speaking of, um, you know, uh, viruses spreading and garbage and, you know, <laughs> all of that good stuff. Uh, ZOM 100, um, I really don't have much to say about it, unfortunately. With the big gap, I've only gotten one, like, real episode in between everything. Uh, and, and, you know, it's fun. It's not really what we were looking for in an anime, I feel like. We wanted, I don't know, I gave up on wanting anything from it. I wanted, like, more meaning and stuff, but it just seems like a self-insert kind of, like, fantasy. Like, what would I do if I didn't have to work kind of thing? Which is, like, the whole point of the anime, I know. But I just kind of wanted more from it. Did you feel like there's too much surrealism in it? Like, the juxtaposition isn't good for the show? Yes. I feel like... Uh, it um, could have been better. Like, the whole shark thing, after they did the shark running around, I was like, oh, okay, they're just doing what they want. Like, this is just a fun show, right? Like, we might mm -hmm. get, like, some sort of, like, like moral lesson in an episode, but it won't be a whole arc of growth and then a moral lesson. It's not like we're watching, you know, Hell's Paradise, or not Hell's Paradise, what was the other one? Heavenly Delusion? Like, that one mm -hmm. was a very heavy show with arcs and you're trying to figure shit out. This is the exact opposite. It's like, you can watch one episode at a time of this and be completely okay. I personally just want to see the, the goddamn big titty samurai chick. That's why I'm tuning in still. I mean, how many episodes are is it in already? It's like eight or nine at this point. Jesus. I know. Well, the thing is, it's got to change, right, when the big titty chick gets there, because she's going to actually actively fight the zombies, whereas, like, we've been um, overpowered by the zombies. Like, there hasn't been any sort of advantage against them. And I feel like that's what's going to change when you get the chick with the sword. I just feel like there's not a lot of character growth. There is not. And, and they're like, what am I watching it for? <clears throat> like, are they... It doesn't look like the goal is to stop, you know, the zombie stuff. So, like, 
we're just watching like it's a fucking slice of life zombie anime. Well, they just lost power <clears throat> and cell service. That was the last thing that happened. That was it took seven or eight episodes for it to happen. But as a um, as a reaction, they're like, okay, well, let's go to Okinawa where my parents are. We don't have power here anyway. So they leave on a, um, an RV. They find an RV. They take the RV out. And they get stopped by the old boss who has started a kind of a caravan. And he's dominating everyone in the way that only Japanese culture can show a boss dominating a person to where, like, their entire being dissolves just because he's like, you don't contribute enough. And it's like, dude, get the fuck out of there. The guy's abusing you. But it takes two episodes for him to realize that. And then that's the growth arc. But it's so cheap and so shallow that it's like, there's no surprise. There's no depth. There's no subtlety. So it's, I don't know. It's just kind of basic, very basic anime. Looks pretty. Mm. But that's obviously where they put all their budget, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. What about Jobless Reincarnation? How's that one doing? Um, I, I think there's a lot of juxtaposition between, like, I've talked about it before. Like, the, the purpose of the last season feels so different than this one. Like, this is so much more of a school day's, like, slow burn set of episodes right now. And I'm just like watching the characters slowly grow and it's like not as perverse as it was before, mm-hmm. but you feel like they're not really making a ton of progress. And it looks like the, the animation budget went like way down. Oh, that sucks. And, <laughs> and so I'm like wondering where it goes from here because it's mostly just, you know, it's like a high school anime right now where like, Oh, we're going through day after day and we're kind of explaining the things that are going on. And like the, the main, the main guy realized that they were attracted to this character that they've known since they were a little kid and they don't <laughs> recognize her. Oh, that's and weird. it's like so frustrating <laughs> to like watch her like, cause like she doesn't want to say, and like, he doesn't realize and you're like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> and you're just waiting here. You're like, I feel like it's like when you're watching Hannibal and you know that Hannibal's Hannibal and nobody else does. <laughs> and you're just like, he's fucking it. He's feeding you people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like at some point that anime is gonna have to have like some sort of like huge, like, I don't know what to say. Uh, like, uh, I don't want to say like altercation, but there's going to be like an explosion or some kind of like tipping point. Right. Cause it has to go back to that same level as drama and action as before. Like it can't be school days the whole time. Right. Well, I see. I, I purposely don't read the manga because I don't want to know what's going to happen. You know, like I understand some people like, well, I get to look forward to the things that are happening. Like, no, I don't want to know because it might sour my opinion of what's happening. I do the same thing. I completely agree. Uh, if there's an, a popular anime, I won't watch um, the or I won't read the manga. I, d- I definitely don't read the manga for like Demon Slayer or JJK or anything like that. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm wondering if like this is just the tone. It, it really feels like... Um, shield hero like how the second season felt very different than the first season Mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if it's going to return to that because there's a lot of big moving parts in this show that we're not really acknowledging right now like we went from like a huge macro view of what was going on to a super micro view and they've separated the party and you don't know if the party is going to get back together either Hmm. so i i'm watching it mostly to see what's happening but it's like, in terms of the shows that we're watching, it's the one I watch first because it's, like, I know that it's not going to be the best episode. Yeah. Um, like, I'll probably stick it out to see what ends up happening. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing with Roni Kenshin Kai, I guess you could say. Like, not to see what's happening. I'm more or less just sticking it out. <laughs> Because it's not the most dynamic anime right now. I mean, if you've seen the original one or if you read the manga, you know exactly what's going to happen. They're one-to-one in the manga, and they're just cutting filler out of the anime. Which, I mean, is like, it's kind of cool, but I'm not really enjoying it anymore. Now, I, I don't know I don't know why I'm watching it. Like, it's probably, probably going to get dropped by the next, like, anime intermission. Do you feel like if they had done, like, a remake, like taken some artistic interpretation it would have been better i feel like it's the same problem like because i don't like dragon ball kai that much and ideally you think like oh if you take out all of this filler stuff all of this powering up and you know all the stuff that's not serious you know oh it's going to be perfect right it'll fix the pacing entirely but then when you watch it again you realize like 
that's kind of what the charm was like was the fact that it was a little rough the animation wasn't as clean like that's kind of part of the charm and like seeing it um so uh what's sterilized that's a good way to put it sterilized it's, it's that's the way it feels it feels very sterile do you get the same sort of impression that uh when yashihime came out where it's like obviously this is supposed to be a callback for those people and like oh look this is what's happened to your universe at the same time like trying to like get the next generation interested but at the same time, it like alienates the people who've originally watched it. Yeah, and it, those are the people who would show the new generation, I feel like, too. And if I was given the choice to show someone Yashihime or Inuyasha, it would be Inuyasha. And it's like, of course, that's not the anime I would show anyway, because, you know, it's really hard to be like, here's one episode of Inuyasha to watch. <laughs> like, here you go. Yeah, but, there's like 200. I hope you're ready for like 200 more of these. Yeah, and it's like, and you got to explain to him like, yeah, it's, there's a lot of filler, you know, it's like, you know, there's that ramble, that preamble you have to do. But, you know, we had to do that when we were kids, too. Like before stuff came out, we ha always kind of had to explain the animes we were watching a little bit, you know. I feel like, I feel like this generation of anime kids are spoiled. They didn't have to go to the movies and get a bootleg copy. <laughs> that's, I don't know, that's, maybe that's a little bit how I feel, but... Um, I mean, there's a lot more choice. That's now. for sure, yeah. <clears throat> Whereas, like, back then, you're like, if it wasn't on Toonami or Adult Swim, or, like, you randomly found the videos or something like that online, or mm -hmm. you were just torrenting stuff, <clears throat> that's all you had access to. But now, like, between Crunch Crunchyroll, Netflix... Um, what else? HBO has anime right now. Like, and the countless there's a lot fan of subbing. Like, there's so much fan subbing. There's so many places they can get access to the videos, and I I feel like suff we're suffering from success, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's too many things that are good, and it's not like when we were kids, where it's like you know I'd be watching ten different anime every week. Right versus now, where it's like I like I have to make sure I watch all three of these anime that I'm watching right now. But it is funny. It's like I, so. I've been falling asleep to um, <laughs> to old Adult Swim and Toonami blocks. Like they're on YouTube. You can watch like from 2007 when Toonami was just starting and it's like that. And there are shows that are on that like you do not remember at all. But then you see it and you're like, oh shit! Like, uh, do you remember like Big O? Well, Big O is definitely one of those, and that one had a lot of charm, but for some reason didn't or, stick. But what about Blue or Pilot Stride. or Pilot Candidate? Remember Pilot Candidate? That's what it was called. No. Yeah, exactly. You don't. I didn't either until I was like, okay, I saw the commercial and I was like, oh shit, I remember this now. Like, that's crazy. But yeah. Cyborg 009 or. See, those are, I still remember those ones, but like, I couldn't believe, like, that one came out of nowhere. I was like, what the hell? Read or Die. We want, I think that one came on for a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, that one too. Yeah. Uh, like, there's so many, like, deep cut animes that. I have just gone like, I, I, oh, I don't Escaflone. Know. Escaflone, yeah, yeah. Of course, you've got the classics like Outlaw Star and what was the other one that was just like a, a Tenchi Muyo. You had friggin' like they were all that kind of like space style anime. All the Gundam Wings, Zoids. But yeah, I don't know. Now it's like, it's funny because we really did have a lot then too, but it was like you said only to what we could access from distributors. And now the distribution is so insane that it really is just like you can throw a hook into a sea and pull out a DVD of a random anime and be like, oh, never seen this before. A DVD? Blu-ray. Sorry, a Blu-ray. <laughs> I mean, you can still buy DVDs. They're a lot cheaper than Blu-rays. Sometimes... Imagine buying physical media modern day well you know it's funny <laughs> I, all right well I'll, I'll give you that but as i say you know what's funny is some of the blu-ray releases of the old stuff when they change the aspect ratio it ruins the line work of the anime because they're stretching it so much anyway grandpa <laughs> that's uh i'm a purist all right but you know this is a good way perfect way for us to transfer into jujitsu kaisen which is honestly using so many like 
interesting animation techniques. <laughs> like their blendings. I feel like they're just throwing darts at the wall sometimes. But like, I really like Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, I think it's got a lot of character. I really think it's showing itself in this season. It's not as bland as the last season because it's not us dealing with the three man cells again. Mm-hmm. Like three, they're separated, and we're getting to see the other characters fleshed out. Whereas, like in Naruto, that didn't happen for a long time. And that was like right? one of the like big, you did, I was saying that's like one of the big problems too. Is it was very derivative at first. You're like, oh god, another three man cell anime. Yeah, we're really getting to flush out the villains, and we're getting to. I mean, we were talking about it earlier that like, you know. Kaido is just, like, way cooler because we're getting to watch, like, somebody think through the situation that's not the hero, which is what we usually have to do. It's normally the hero against the deus ex machina, and so it's, like, all the strategy comes from the heroes. And so you want to see the hero's strategy succeed, right? Or you want to see the heroes obstruct the strategy of the villains. But then in this one, you're like, I want to see Ghetto get Gojo. Like, you're like, why do I want this? This is, well, I, don't, it, I shouldn't, but. Well, it's it's going to force him to grow, right? And, like, I still see some of the panels on my, like, TikTok and stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. <laughs> um, because of the things that I know are going to happen soon in the anime. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, Ugh. like, I like Gojo. But after watching like the whole four what was it, like four or five episodes, yeah, the whole like prequel thing, like you're just like, oh, Ghetto's like way better written character than Gojo <laughs> was, like, and and I have to assume it's intentional, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, after the all the bad things that happened, Gojo had to grow, whereas Ghetto, like, he was growing while it was happening. Mm-hmm. Well, do you think from a writer's standpoint, do you think he probably just wrote like the basic three man cell anime and then realized he had a really good conflict between Ghetto and Gojo? And then that's how that story happened. And it's also why we're not getting it until now. I have to imagine it was written like um, the way the story is kind of written. It really feels like the school was where things started, Mm -hmm. like the way he was telling the story. And then he manufactured a conflict and he realized like, well, if we're existing in this world and this is the the point of who the characters are, right? Like what their jobs are, this is what's going to happen, right? Like we can see people growing conflicted instead of them being like very one dimensional, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I think it's, it feels very fresh because Ghetto fe- doesn't feel one dimensional the way a lot of the other characters do, even the other villains. Right. Even um, the guy from the, the movie, mm-hmm. right? Like, or not the guy from the movie and the guy from the last arc, right? Like, right. they feel way more dynamic. And I think that there's not really a sense of that the way with a lot of the animes that currently exist, you're not getting that. You're, you're getting it more prolonged, so it feels like less is happening. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very, it feels very fresh yeah. to see it happening. I, I enjoy, um, I, I think it's the, I think it's exactly that, is because we as watchers are so used to the All Might character being infallible, you know? Like, this is the Superman character. And... We've seen in the last arc from Gojo's growth and his conflicts against his friend or what started as his friend Ghetto that he's not infallible. And you're right. It took us how many arcs of uh, My Hero Academia to get to even a little bit of All Might's backstory and, you know, how he is the way he is and how he deals with that conflict. And um, because of such, it feels like an explosive growth. But what it's doing is it's also giving um, immediate depth to these characters and weight to the actions that they're taking. Like, we're no longer just like, oh, well, now we're just waiting for Gojo to come in and kick ass. Now we're waiting for Gojo to come in to see what the villain has planned for him specifically. Like, we need to know. Like, I I almost wonder if without without knowing like mm-hmm. i don't know if this is true if we'll get more of the flushed out backstory once the thing that's going to happen to gojo happens mm-hmm. um as a way to flush out his character because we his character feels very shallow right, right? Re- relative to ghetto right and in order to balance things out there has to be some growth on the other side mm-hmm. right like we need to understand more of gojo's backstory 
or understand why he does the things he does. They need to humanize or, him. Yeah. And and they're not doing that. Yeah. Right. Well, and, a, and I, and I, I uh, wonder if this arc is going to kind of do that. I just I just had like a total realization that answered my question. That's why we like Ghetto more than Gojo, because even though Ghetto is working against humanity and is like wants to essentially eliminate humanity, he's the most human character because he's what. Uh, a flawed person would do in the face of perfection like i i well, and, and gojo isn't flawed right we don't see him as having flaws it, realistically his only flaw is like his overconfidence he's too ascended of a character exactly but yeah i mean i think it's really good writing and i mean if he realized that either before or after i think he's still doing a good job he started with like a very basic structure of a shonen, and now he's working into something deeper, something that's kind of turning the shonen trope on its head, if you ask me, better than mm. in an outward satire would. You know, it's actually, um, what's the sub, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sub, subverting the genre. Subverting? Yep, that's it. Mm. But yeah, I mean, speaking of not subverting the genre, mm. I mean, I just have to wait. Before we move on to Bleach, which, you know, is staying super tropey, I just want to, you know, give a shout out to Jitsu Kaisen for, you know, the Gurren Logan references. That episode got me so hype. And then when he fucking... Spoilers. Spoilers for like five seconds, guys. You can literally skip like 30 seconds. You won't miss any. But when he fucking killed him with the drill, that was so bittersweet for me. I was like, no! That drill is not meant for the evil. <laughs> But anyway, moving on to Bleach. <laughs> Bleach has been kind of a roller coaster where it's like, I feel like it's doing the things that Kenshin wanted to do, where it's like, you know, to ignite that fire from when we were kids and watching the show. Definitely. And at the same time, like making it go so much bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Like scale, like in terms of the fighting, in terms of like the character development because it's like it's been so long since we've been with these characters right yeah and it's like every time they do something you're like oh yeah i remember this character right like they have to do very little to just like reignite that flame in your mind well i mean we speaking of reigniting flames we finally got to see ken pachi in action i don't think by the last one we had seen that episode but now even with the two-week gap We've seen the insane Kenpachi fight. And you're just like sitting there. I think I had said like, oh, someone's better than Kenpachi. It was a better fight than the Kenpachi fight last episode of our anime yeah. intervention. But now, no, Kenpachi's back on top. He's the fucking goat. Like the fucking fight where it was like literally the biggest deus ex machina versus the I can do anything deus ex machina character. And then like the writing. That's the thing. That's the writing that I think is amazing. Tite Kubo is just like... If I put two deus ex machinas against each other, but his, it's like the immovable object versus the unstoppable force, right? It's like, but mm. he can cut through anything. Then technically he could cut through the imagination. And that was just, that whole fucking episode had me so hyped. I was doing like the whole, like getting out of my chair, like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, thing. Like, it was good. <laughs> now, I think for me, like the... The ep when I said there's like a roller coaster, I feel like some episodes needed to be longer and mm -hmm. like what was happening and other episodes needed to be shorter, especially these last two episodes. I feel oh like if God. those had been <laughs> one episode, it would have been better. And yeah. then the Ken Pachi episode more stretched out because the fight was only like half of the episode. It's true. And I feel like it's it's pacing is done intentionally because it's like it's supposed to be sort of chaotic we're supposed to be all this stuff is happening at once instead of it you know happening one at a time mm -hmm. and i'm just like watching you're like oh no i want to watch every character's like get their moment but it's like we only have so much time yeah well i think what's going to happen is when we enter the the um the upper the upper serate um we're going to get a lot of that at once yeah, especially knowing what the powers are of the other people. Mm -hmm. I I know that it's going to get really crazy. And we haven't even seen Aizen do his Aizen thing. I forgot like, all about Aizen. I forgot he was skulking <laughs> around back there. Yeah, he's just hanging out. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> you know, he, he's doing something. Yeah, he's not just right? sitting there. He's <laughs> thinking so hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how he's, like, so ripped. He doesn't work out at all. He just thinks so hard that he burns all of those calories. <laughs> I'm I'm continually impressed with what Bleach has been doing, given sort of what's happened to like Baruto, yeah, and like what happened to Naruto, like the way, 
they started going down their their path even mm-hmm. even like in reference to the animes that are going right now even jjk my hero academia demon slayer i feel like they're doing things differently and it it feels very adult where a lot of the other ones still feel very kitty because they're just fucking killing people in this show. I'm really enjoying what's happening right now in anime, actually. Like the change from um, it's almost like <laughs> we're growing to from shonen. The whole world, the culture of the what's popular in anime is growing from the shonen to the seinen kind of thing. It's like we want high quality stories. We want high quality animation we want depth in our characters and growth i think it's because not like we're in our 30s obviously so they're not marketing much to us anymore but they know it's our children and they know that we are still the ones who are going to be buying and we're growing out of all of that we we've seen someone power up and kill their bad guy or talk no jutsu a million times. We want to see someone, as they're talking, get shot in the fucking head because that's what would happen in real life. <laughs> like, Yeah, because nothing good can ever happen, right? <laughs> I mean, you didn't have to take it there, but it's true. I mean, we are in the, a very dark time right now. <laughs> yeah, we're in the darkest timeline right now in terms <laughs> yeah, that's of right. the economy, you know, <laughs> like... Yeah, this, this is just a fantasy podcast. We're not here to talk about the economy. But, you know, speaking of real world stuff, you just finished the One Piece live action. What did you think of that? So as somebody who has vehemently avoided One Piece because it's just too much and going back to episode one of that show, <laughs> it looks so bad. It's going to look so blocky that I can't, I can't sit through it. Not to mention um, the well, not to mention the storyline for like the first one hundred episodes. If we want to talk about tropey shonen bait, it's like it, it was that era. So it's like trying to watch it now is like it's like trying to listen to classical music. You're just like, I've heard all of this before a million times, well, but with better better stuff added on top of it. Like I I was really pleasantly surprised about the quality. Mm-hmm. Like they, it looked like they threw a lot of money at it. And it seemed so consistent. The characters seem very consistent with what I know about them. And then, as in any other shonen, the worst part about the show is the MC. <laughs> like, the MC doesn't grow enough, whereas all the characters around them end up growing and have having struggles. And it's very much the, the Superman thing. Well, he's Superman. We, we have to make him human. And I'm just like... His attitude isn't consistent with him being human. <laughs> it's not him struggling. Yeah. So I, I watched all nine episodes. It took me like it took me over a week to watch them just because we're talking full hour episodes. Mm-hmm. And it is really good. Like the things that are even a little hyperbolic, they do well because the acting is good. <laughs> like you buy in, you it's I'm sort of amazed what they did with eight episodes which is supposed to be like almost a hundred episodes of the anime well i mean um about I was, I was establishing gonna, characters and everything yeah i was gonna start watching one pace which is one piece but cut out and it's like it's still like i want to say at least 10 hours to get to 100 episodes like it's still a lot of like time you have to invest and i mean watching it in that format i feel like gives you it gives you more to look at like it gives you more to like Okay, now I get to see these real people dressed like this, and I get to look at all this, the stage and prop design and the practical effects versus the CGI effects. Whereas when you're watching those first episodes, 100 episodes of the anime, it's, it's incredibly critical because you're like, oh, like this doesn't look good. I, the story isn't good. Like, this is a slog. Yeah, whereas this, like, if you haven't watched it and you're like, even a little bit interested, I would suggest you give it a few episodes. Um, the, the the acting between the other characters is very, very good. And mm-hmm. like across the board, <clears throat> I know it's really tropey at times, but I think the the commitment to the the acting and like the characters looking very strange a lot of the time, like it doesn't stop them. You don't see the other characters break. And then because they believe that everything feels real, it feels real to you when you're watching it. Hmm. Well, I mean, kudos. That's what I say for finally making a really good anime adaption. I, 
I was super on the fence, you guys. I promise you, I went into it assuming it was going to be shit, and I watched the first couple episodes. I was like, this is... I think it's not that bad. That's the pretty much the general consensus of it is like people go in being like, burr, burr, but then they come out and, you know, they're a part of the straw hat pirates. Well, <laughs> well you know, anyway, let us know if you're a part of the straw hat pirates. And, you know, if we're really missing out on one piece, let us know why in the comments. But thanks for tuning in this week to our anime intermission. And we'll see you next month. Bye. He's sick.